Welcome back, well back to another Click Team Firefly tutorial. I was trying to live stream this, but apparently my internet decided to get slow the moment I started live streaming. So this is a video tutorial now. Um, this will be over a platformer. Um, basically just remaking the platformer that came with the Firefly example. Just kind of explaining it better. I shouldn't say better. I'm explaining it more, I guess. So first things first, let's throw in an engine and a camera. Also, sorry for my mic. Sorry about my mic quality. Um, my puppy decided to eat my good mic, <laughs> so I had to go get a five dollar mic, which is also part of the reason I haven't been uploading videos. Uh, we're gonna make another layer. Our platformer is actually gonna be on a separate layer. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Uh, the reason I'm doing it like this is because it's easier. Um. If you already know how to use Click Team Fusion, then making a platformer in Click Team Fusion would be easy, and then you just transfer that data over to 3D. Um, we're going to make two objects, or sorry, two active. The first one we are going to make red, and that's going to be our platform. Then the second one we are going to make green. Just like that. Let's go ahead and rename those platform and player. Now, oh, we are going to put this platform at 300 just because that's where I like it. And 15 since I did not set the hotspot. And we are going to, whoops, we are going to paint. The platform. Uh, it probably honestly just be easier. All right, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna try to paint it. I have no luck with that feature. Let's duplicate and let's say uh, ten. Nope, that, uh, that'll be okay. And we are going to duplicate one more. Stop. Ah. that down a bit and we can make another eight more. So one, eight, there we go. We will need the platform movement object. But there we go. And I'm not gonna change much here. Um I will change this to fifty. We come to hard stop that twenty five just Increase our jumping a little bit and hop back over to the Firefly side of things. Let's up our engine's ambient lighting so we don't need to add a light source. And we are going to strip the camera of all of its values besides the Y value. Um, let's go ahead and add a primitive. Because that's what we're going to be using as our platform. So, uh, platform 3D. Change this to 32 just to match the actual size of the primitive. And we will need a animated node. Let's grab the file real quick. I made a ninja file. I didn't really make it. I downloaded a ninja file. And had a software add the animations for me. Um, I didn't scale this properly, so I'm going to upscale that real quick. And I believe that's all. We got our little platform set up. Now, the way I am going to do this, I'm going to move the camera and the engine off screen. That way, whenever we run, We only see 2D. And we're going to set up the 2D first. So, start a frame. Let's set the platform movement object to the player. And let's make a group called PMO. Just to make things organized. So, 
first things first, we want to test for collision, test for object collision, and we want to see if the player is colliding with the platform. If so, we want to set the collision to um, object does overlay. Basically, what that does is it allows an active to be seen as a platform. Um, go back over here real quick. Let's go to the actual layer we're looking at. If you, we were to make a backdrop, uh, actual backdrop at channel A, there it is. And go into the settings, we'll have obstacle type, or we can put obstacle platform or ladder. My setting, that line of code we just did, we see the active as that obstacle now. So, whenever we run this, we should stop. That was a bit weird. All right, we'll just deal with it later. Now, let's set up some movement. Repeat while A is pressed. Let's just copy that for D. And we want to, on user input, user is holding left key for A, because we'll be going left, but we want to go left. And then right for D. I'm just going to move this down some. So now we should have some movement. Let's edit this. Start the max velocity 250. Let's put gravity. Uh, ooh, not 200. Ah, I see my problem. Okay. I guess my computer doesn't like OBS. So, we have that working. Now, jumping. Uh, we're going to map space to jumping. And we need to make sure, whoops, not negate. We need to make sure that the player object is standing on the ground. Then we can jump, because you don't want to just be able to jump, even though nothing's there. Excuse me. And all, that's all for the movement, um, uh, 2D movement, that is. We'll have to come back to this for 3D. Now, at the start of frame, let's go ahead and delete this, because we don't actually need it. And we want to run a for each loop for the floor. So, floor for each object, let's start loop create. You can name the loop whatever you so please. Let's move that up. Now, for that loop, so we're going to go to the platform, and on each loop, make sure we name the loop create, we want to create a new object, and it'll be the platform 3D, and we want to create that on layer 2, I believe, throw it up here somewhere, so we'll take the far firefly stuff here. No, our Firefly stuff is on layer 1, so I was mistaken. Layer 1. And we're going to set the position, but I forgot. We also need to set up some stuff in, on the Firefly side, so let's go back. We need to add transpose. Basically what that is, is it takes your 2D location and puts it into 3D which is very helpful if um, you're using a 2D underlay, like I am currently. Um, especially if it's like a platformer and you don't need all three anyway to begin with. That way you don't have to try to figure out like how to move the player. It's so much easier and faster to just use the 2D underlay. Um, this will take care of the X movement, the left and right, and the Y movement, so up and down. Um, if we have to, we can code the forward and backwards, like if you need to run away from the camera to go get like an object or something. Well, that's, that's up to you. Um, it wouldn't be that hard, it's just, since the camera is fixed, the location will be the same no matter what, so you can just map W and S for forward and backwards movement. Um, that reminds me, in the start of frame, we also need to set the camera's Z position. I'm going to set it to negative 300. 
Okay. Let me just see what I have so far. Um, we should also load a material for the player. So, let's throw in a material cache real quick. And I'm going to name the first one player to get a new material and name it block. Now, for the block, it can be really simple. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. I am just going to fill it green. And the player I have a texture for on my desktop. It is one of these. This one. There we go. Now there's a lot of ways you can apply textures. Um, if you're not creating things, that is. If you're creating something, uh, you should negate checking the or the texture, which you'll see here in a second whenever we set that up. For the player, I am going to load material at the start of frame, and we whoops. We are going to get material zero and put it into index zero. That way our player has texture and we can actually see it better rather than just like a gray blob. Okay, back to this. Just double checking. Let's move this up. And that all looks good. So back to this for a loop or for each loop. Um, after we create the object, we are going to set the location of said primitive. So we want to set the 2dx, or sorry, we want to set the x coordinate to the 2dx of the platform. And we want to set the y coordinate. Let's see. Y coordinate. Y coordinate is an expression. Um, the transpose system is a little weird when it comes to, like, platformers and placing things, um, which doesn't mean it's hard to use. It's meant to be easier to use if, like, you're new to a 3D space and you can't wrap your head around having three different, um, axes. So, it's not a bad system. It just has its quirks, like, everything does, honestly. Um, so the... Position, the Y positioning for everything will be platform, and this this inconsistency is only for the Y axis, which is up and down, which makes gravity easier in a sense, since you don't have to figure or try to figure out um, up and down movement for a platformer that's not first person, since the first person camera already has it built in. So it's more or less a give or take. Um, Let's start off with a open parenthesis, and we want the Y position minus 300 times 1. Now, 300 will place the, uh, sorry, 300 places the um, block of 300 units since we started at 300. Uh, I can show you. Yeah, we started all the way down here at 300, so we're just going to place it up because we don't want our platforms up here and kind of program out there. It's just easier to see what's in the actual frame. Go back there so I can see everything we've done. And I need to move that up, actually. If you don't want to set the position in, create something. That's fine. Order. order of operations is important, guys. Okay, next we are going to make an always line, and this is for the player's um, location as well as the camera. That's basically the only thing that's going to be in here. So, starting with our player, we want to set the position to the player active that we have. So, X will be the X position, Y will be that same funky little equation that we have. 
Y position, open parenthesis, Y minus 300 times 1. Let's move that down. And then we need to set the camera's position. So the camera always follows the player. We are going to set the camera position to the same exact um, positions as the player. So again, it will be the X of the player. And insert the little expression that we have. Open parenthesis. Y minus 300, close, times 1. And we also need to make sure that the camera is actually always looking at the player. So let's add target. Which that's basically what it is. It sets the target location for the camera to look. So I'm just going to copy and paste this since it's easier. Um, we want to add, or no we don't. Uh, we set that in the the properties. At least I think I did. Let's see. Camera properties. Yeah, that's already been changed to 10. So we don't need to add 10. And that honestly should be it. If we run this, we should have a platform. And I forgot to realign things. That fell, so let's put that back at 300. Let's move the engine back so we can actually see Firefly. And the camera so we can have our Firefly eyes. Uh, something's not right. Also forgot to add the texture. Do that right quick. So let's check for the primitive. Has loaded a material index. Now you're probably wondering oops just put zero there. You're probably wondering, well well, it doesn't have anything. Yes. It, you're correct. So let's negate that. To show that it doesn't have anything. And if it doesn't have anything, we are going to load material two. Or sorry, one. And to index zero. Now that block should be right whenever we're running. To confirm it's green. Now let's figure out what's happening with. I forgot to transpose. I hope that's the only problem. Maybe they'll fix it, or then I'll mess up somewhere else. Looks like I messed up somewhere else too. Let's see. One loop. We want to create. We always want to set. That looks right. Let's just double check this application. So I don't understand why that wouldn't be working. Let's see. So this, this is the application I use to test this to make sure that it works. And from this application, this is what I. This is what I created. Granted, it's kind of slow because of my frame rate, but I have a platformer going on here. And the code looks the same. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Close 
close that out. So that needs a startup. I was also trying to work out ladders, but uh, I haven't got that working yet. So that will be a later update. Now, starter frame. We destroyed it. Uh, we started the 480th loop. Maybe order is important. We set the Z coordinates 300. Uh, this is ladder, so it's not important. And we set the object. We're always setting the coordinates. Ah. Let's see. These are negative one. Which makes sense because the uh, player is inverted for some reason. So we need to invert that positioning. Oh, good rating. Oh, that should work. So let's have the incorrect transpose select it. I think I do actually. Oh, uh, let's check this. TDX to 2D. Hmm. What do I have set to this one? Ah, that's what it is. Okay. You're not supposed to transpose the blocks, it's just a player. That's why I was messing up. So if we turn this off, that should work. My apologies. There we go. Oh, that's a bit weird. happens if we don't put these at negative one. I think our gravity pulls up. Yep. Our gravity pulls up. So those do need to be at negative one. And for great gravity, um make sure our hot spot is being Place. That should fix it, I believe. If I follow it. During the live stream, I tried to run the application. It just, it just wouldn't load. It refused to. There we go. There we go. That's what it was. It was just a hot spot. All of those blocks are. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I'm sorry guys, I've literally just learned how to make a platformer, or I literally just went through trying to make a platformer last night. So it's not burnt into my brain yet. But that works. And if we were to duplicate this three more times, then we can go to the PMO and we can add for a test. So position, test position. If the player leaves, we can tell the movement to stop. Which I believe is a test for collision. Let's have that. I actually haven't used platform movement object in about a year. Oh, nope. Does it stop? No, it's not stop because we don't have any movement. That wouldn't even let us stop. So, all of movement.
Eh, easiest way to do this is just copy this and then make a boundary. Bring in an active. Place one there. Oops. There we go. Place one there, one there. And then we can just check for collision on those. So, check for the boundary. That should be true. And it should stop us. There we go. Gotta love that 20 frames per second gameplay. Okay, now one last thing that we have to do in the PMO is set the Y rotation. And let's see if I can remember this correctly. Uh, y rotation. We can set the Y rotation to let's subtract 90 to begin with. Um, we'll get the player's animation value times 11.25. The reason we are using these values specifically. Um, if you look at the animation, you have 32 different rotations that you can have. Um, 360 divided by 32 is 11.25. Excuse me. So, like, if you were making a top down, this would come in handy. Um, it also come or it will fully come in handy in a top down situation. Um, for us, we're only using two, so we could program the actual angles. At most, we'll have three angles or four angles. But this is easier. The negative 90 is the offset between um, Firefly and Click Team. I'm not sure if my code is messed up with this, the frame rate. Oh, I forgot to stop it. Oh, let's actually put this on all of the game. There we go. That's a lot of work. Oh, it's still not working. Always set Y angle. That should work. Oh well. We'll just manually set it. Less taxing anyway. So, node Y angle Y. Uh, I believe A is 90 and D is negative 90. make sure so she isn't moonwalking and there we go and then if you're going back and forth so let's just I'm not gonna do that if you're going back and forth you can set this to uh, 45 I want to say or sorry 0 and uh, 180 um, for your forward and backwards movement you will be messing with the Z coordinate which isn't transposed so you would actually have to program that but since the camera is fixed um, you wouldn't have any problem out of that. That's about it for this platformer. Um, obviously, if you make the frame bigger, um, you can fit more in there. Um, you can also program outside the frame. You'll just need to set up these collisions. Or I guess if you're using the platform movement object, you'll need to set them up anyway. Hopefully, I can get ladders um, programmed, or I can figure out how to do ladders. Go to this application I was working on. I have this backdrop it's currently set as a ladder, and I have these that I'm trying to make ladders. Haven't got to figure it out yet. What this is what it looks like.
eventually I'll figure it out, and then I'll update this video with ladders. But that is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, I can get a mic soon and start making more videos. I do have an example file for sale on itch.io. Um, it has a lot of examples, actually. Just open recent. There it is. At least I think that's mine. Come on, load. Yeah, here it is. Um, there's multiplayer examples, first person movement, and with the first person movement, there's four different types, and you can literally just copy and paste this frame into your game. You can have first person movement done. Um, third person, which is a tutorial I've already uploaded. Um, fog animations, like how to do animations, how to use the new per pixel lighting setup, mouse pick for like if you want to open doors or um, like pick up objects so you don't pick them up too far. There's a full, there's not full game. There's a couple of games, two actually. Um, they're not full games, it's just kind of stringing some of this stuff together. Like the Endless Zombie FPS is a menu, a gun selection, and then um, loading zombies. It's not meant to be a full game, it's just, hey, this is how you would do this. For example, if I go to the gun selection and run this, um, I don't have any of the models loaded, but you'll see, because I was moving stuff around, uh, you'll see the name change up there in the corner, information down at the bottom change, you can select your colors whatever and if I go to the event editor this is basically how you do it um this one is just like a camera like changing camera views uh uh what is it third person which is like the example that I've uploaded but also a quick camera and I just added these two this is the platformer that I'm doing the video over actually um and then quake 3 map importing which like BMS and PK3, which I just found, figured those two things out, so I'm adding this one. Um, it's 299 on itch.io. I will upload it, or I will update it if anyone asks me to put something on it, like this platformer. Um, someone in Zentaco's Discord server was asking about a side scroller platformer. So I made this video, I'm putting it on the MFA, and I'm gonna go update it hopefully today. Um, I'm also going to be having a second MFA file with full games. I'm currently working on a multiplayer, uh, a little multiplayer, one like 1v1, 2v2 on our uh, first person shooter. And I'll be adding a couple more games before I release that. But I will try to link that down in the description if anyone is interested. The files you cannot use, but the MFA, like anything actually in the MFA, you can use. So like if you wanted to copy the multiplayer over into your game, feel free to, I don't care. But you cannot use the models because they're not mine. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.